everybody done here. This is a breakdown of a tiny animation about some soap bubbles floating up in the sky and bursting. Here's our scene. It's very simple. The bubbles are just sphere. It's a particle system. I don't know how familiar are you with the particle system. I have a bubble, which is my model, my model bubble. I have an emitter, which is a plane. Now the emitter is not visible, but basically it's where the bubble are created from, where they start. So let me hide my model and I made the bubble in a way that they will start before my timeline and then they will randomly disappear like when the bubble just explodes. In the scene there's also a camera that slightly moves. The depth of field is activated and my focus object is this empty. That means that my focus is on this point and everything else is slightly out of focus. This is to give a more realistic look. So let me show what happens if I change these settings a little bit. So here's my focus. And if I go into my camera, and I increase the effect, let's go 0.5. You can now see that the ones in the background are slightly out of focus, while the one close to the empty are more in focus. Let's have a look at the settings I use for the particle system. Here you can see the emitter is this just a normal plane. meter we can see that the frame start is 250 frame before the animation that's because I wanted to have some bubbles already in the scene from the first frames not waiting for the generation there are in total 200 bubbles and the generation doesn't stop until the end of my animation so we keep having bubbles new bubbles every couple of frames. Lifetime randomness is set to 1 because I wanted them to last for 250 frames. That means that they will start bursting from the first frame because they already were alive for 250 frames, but it's random, so they may burst or not, and this will give the realistic explosion of the bubbles. Velocity, well, this is really up to you and up to what you want to achieve with your uh, scene. I have some rotation, the sphere, so it really doesn't matter. And show emitter is something that you want to remove in your render. The emitter, it's the plane. The object I used is the template sphere that I'll show you earlier, this sphere here. Honestly, there's not much else. It's a very simple particle system. It's a very simple scene. Let's have a look at the shader I use for this soap bubble. A soap bubble is a transparent object where the look is given by the reflections of the environment mixed with the color of the soapy film that usually revolve and moves on the surface, creating this kind of noise interference. So I tried to quickly create with notes an effect that would simulate the moving of the noise on the surface of the bubble while retaining these reflections here depending on the position of the bubble so maybe you can see a bit better here 
see look at this reflection the reflection moves accordingly to the spatial position while this noise will behave in a different way the background I use it's a background from HDRI Haven as usual it's this image it's called Klufendal you can go and download it from the website let's have a look at the same scene with the dark background here's our soap bubble how it would it look like in a dark background before having a look at the shader editor let's have a look here as the scene we have bloom activated to have this kind of very strong glow and we have screen space reflections activated too let's have a closer look to the shader we have a mixed shader because i used two principal shader very simple one that just reflects the environment so there's no color information the only thing i did is setting the transparency to a very low level it's basically almost transparent this would be completely visible but i set the alpha at a very low level while the other layer it's just a color and then they are mixed into this mix shader you can adjust this to your taste let's have a look to how i achieve the color because this is the most complex part but as you can see it's a fairly simple shader alpha again i want to be able to see through and have some additional reflections otherwise it would have been completely dark but i like the fact that i can mix the two different part of the bubble the one in front and the one on the back plus having some elements of the background too the palette used for the color has been created with the color ramp so i just picked up a few colors you can really decide the look of the bubble based on the position of each single color and create different look In order to have the color coming from the external part of the object to the center, where the center is blue, then we have this kind of magenta, then we have a yellow, and then we have some green on the border. We need to assign this gradient as a gradient texture, and then we have facing parameter from a layer weight node. I'm using this noise texture that I'm gonna show you in a moment. Okay, this is the noise texture without this gradient color. The hue of the color is altered by this noise texture. So this would be without, which is still cool, but it's not what I wanted. I want something moving all around. So I alter with this noise node the position of the U on the sphere, which is mapped, of course, but it's mapped based on the position of the geometry. So that would be without, wouldn't look any, any good. But adding the position, not only is mapped around, but also moving that sphere, the noise would move to. Of course, this color is then mixed with the transparency and highly reflected surface. And here we have the final look that's all for today thank you so much for watching this video please subscribe to this channel more tutorial will come more frequently i promise bye